What's going on, Space Monkeys? This is an episode about a book review, so um, it's not really a Fight Club episode, but as you guys know, if you've been watching, is that I don't just do political commentary. I also read a lot, and I'm a writer, so I, uh, if I come along a good book, I like to review it. And um, these aren't necessarily new books. I, I write a lot of horror, and right now I'm working on a book that's a bunch of horror stories, so I'm reading a lot of other, you know, horror stories right now. So I did one on Night Shift by Stephen King, uh, Golden Apples of Tomorrow by Ray Bradbury, or uh, Golden Apples of the Sun by Ray Bradbury, and uh, now I'm doing one that's even older than that. I just finished it this morning. It's kind of long. It's the uh, best of Edgar Allan Poe. Yep, and so this one was 1833 or so, and it's a lot of his uh, best stuff and some of this I'd already read before but I decided to read the entire thing and it's nearly 500 pages So it was it took me a little bit, but it was the the stories are the cask of Amontillado The black cat the telltale heart the mask of the red death the pit in the pendulum premature burial The facts in the case of M. Valdemar Bernice the fall of the house of Usher the gold bug the dis a descent into uh, the maelstrom and William Wilson um, so I thoroughly enjoyed this. If you've ever read any Poe, uh, you know that he does a lot of, like, psychological, um, kind of despair style, like, where a lot of his, um, writing is about psychosis and paranoia, and his description that he uses is really, really stifling at times, um, and of course, I love that, but even he can go overboard sometimes. Like, some of these stories are fantastic, the first half of it is particularly good, but then there's some that he just, he gets a little bit wordy, and I get it, he wants to, you know, talk about how awful emotional trauma is and stuff like that. I like to write like that too, but um, I don't think this stuff would really sell nowadays. It's still wonderful, um, and, you know, he's, he's really the one that started it all with a lot of this stuff too, so um, of all of these stories... The Pit and the Pendulum was wonderful. The Cask of Amontillado. The Black Cat I had never read before. That's probably the best story in the book. It's wonderful. Um, it's horrifying. Telltale Heart was wonderful. Mask of the Red Death is wonderful. Premature Burial is pretty good. Facts in the case of M. Uh, Valdemar is pretty good. That one's about hypnosis. Bernice, and that's where it, it starts to fall off a little bit. Bernice and the Fall of the House of Usher are so boring. Um, so they... I would give them three stars each, probably two for Fall of the House of Usher. Usher it's such a boring story. Um, but then he kicks it right back in with The Gold Bug, which, again, I had not read. It's pretty long, and it's not really a horror story so much as it is kind of like a, a creepy, you know, adventure story about finding lost treasure, treasure which is really cool. Uh, a Descent into the Maelstrom was three stars. And William Wilson at the end is kind of uh, about like schizophrenia and uh, suicidal ideation. It, it It's very, very wordy. It's too long. And it's kind of like, it's like Poe's um, attempt at, you know, like any movie you've seen where the main character has a split personality. So it's like Stephen King's Secret Window or even Chuck Palahniuk's Fight Club or, you know, any number of other works where the main character you're not sure if they are actually seeing things or if it's all in their head and if in the in the story itself is they keep seeing a character that looks kind of like them and they consider it their arch nemesis um and it turns out it's just he's kind of schizo and it is a good story but it's so wordy and it's so long that it just i don't know it, it threw it all off and it's unfortunate that it was the last story in here because i'd like to go out with a bang but i'm giving this a four star I might upgrade it to five. Um, if it weren't for the two or three, like, three stars in here, it would be one of the best uh, compilations I've ever read in my entire life. But there were a handful of five stars, for sure. Pit in the Pendulum, Telltale Heart. Um, I would give The Gold Bug also five stars. Um, let's see here. The Black Cat, I'd give six stars, man. That's the scariest story in here uh, by a long shot. And then Mask of the Red Death, probably four um facts in the case of m valdemar for 
and Casco Amontillado, I give that a five. I quite enjoyed that story. I've read that one a handful of times in my life. So um, I highly recommend, um, if you guys have any uh, good recommendations for short story compilations for horror stories, please leave them in the comments below. I, uh, I'm i always looking for stuff that I haven't heard of. I've got a stack that's about 10 deep of Stephen King, you know, Roald Dahl, Lovecraft, um, and believe it or not, yeah, Roald Dahl does write ho uh, horror, if you didn't know that. He's the guy who wrote uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the Witches and stuff. That's not all he did. He didn't just write for children. He's pretty scary. Um, and then, of course, more Bradbury and stuff like that. So leave a comment below if you want to, if you have any recommendations for me. I don't even know what I'm going to be starting up next. I think I'm going to be reading uh, The Best of Lovecraft, because Ian just gave me that book. So I'm going to read that one pretty soon. But Tales of Poe. Highly recommend. Four stars. It's too bad. Uh, there, if there were a little less fluff, it would be a five-star book. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you later.